Okay, we're gonna start doing an Inca pre trip or in vehicle inspection. First, we're gonna start with my safety belt. So my safety belt should be properly mounted and secure. It's not thrown or damaged. Make sure there's no missing pieces. Make sure it latches and unlatches properly. So it is properly working. Next, I'm gonna make a safe start. So I'm gonna turn the key to the on position. I'm paying close attention to the DPF lights to go off and the ABS light to go off. If they stay, they stay on, something's wrong with the ABS or the DEF lights. Okay, they went off, so it's properly working. Now I'm gonna perform a safe start, clutch all the way in, start the vehicle, and make sure it's in neutral. Okay, release my clutch slowly. Okay. And I'm gonna start checking my gauges from left to right. So I'm gonna start with my water temperature gauge, should be properly mounted and secure and working properly. So right now it's at 140, but it should be rising all the way to 170 to 200 Fahrenheit. So it should be rising, properly working. This is my DEF fuel gauge, so it's properly mounted and secure and it's reading properly. So make sure my DEF fuel, it doesn't get to 1.8. If it gets to 1.8, we're gonna have some malfunctioning on your tractor. So make sure it is properly working and it has more than one egg. This is my oil pressure gauge. So make sure it's properly mounted and secure and it should be reading anywhere from 15 to 40, 45 PSI. Okay, right now it's called it's reading a little bit more, but it should go down to the 15 to 40 PSI. So it's properly working. This is my transmission temperature gauge. It's properly mounted and secure, properly working. Right now it's reading about 100 PSI, but it should be rising to the normal range, which is 170 to 200 Fahrenheit. So it's properly working. I'm gonna show my tachometer gauge, so it's properly working. So I'm stepping on the gas pedal and it is moving. So it is working properly. This is my speedometer gauge. So this speedometer gauge, we cannot check until the hot, the truck is uh, start moving forward. So we'll check it later. This is my voltimeter gauge. The voltimeter is properly mounted and secure and properly working and it should be reading anywhere from 13.5 volts to 14.5 volts. So right now it's properly working. This is my fuel gauge, it's properly mounted and secure, properly working. Okay, it should be reading, it's reading right now at 7.8, so it's properly working. Right now it's clean and working. This is my air pressure gauges. So I have my primary air pressure gauge and my secondary air pressure gauge. So they should be properly mounted and secure and working rising to the normal range, which is 110 to 120 PSI. So they're both on 120, they're properly working. Now, well, now I'm gonna check my lights indicators. So I'm gonna put my forward flashers lights so they're properly working. Cancel them. I'm gonna put my left turn signal and my right turn signal, it should be properly working. I'm gonna put my high beam, should be properly working. So these uh, bright lights should be my bright lights outside. So they're properly working. Since I'm right here on my, my lever here, I'm gonna push in to make sure my water, my windshield washer fluid is properly working and my power, my wiper should be properly working and with the good rubber blade in place, okay? So I'm gonna push it in and it should be properly working. The rubber blade is in shape and it's not missing, okay? So from here, I'm gonna check my windshield. Since so I'm over here, my windshield is properly mounted and secure. No cracks bigger than three inches like this one. This mirror, this windshield needs to be replaced. So make sure there's no uh, cracks bigger than three inches or intersecting cracks or any signs of any leakage on the roof. So this is properly mounted and secure. And like I said, this windshield needs to be replaced. From here, I'm gonna move to the climate control knobs. So I'm gonna check my AC. So I put it in AC and make sure it is in the AC and it's properly working. Now from here, I'm gonna move it to the heater, put it in the vent, and make sure it's hot air coming through here, so make sure the heater is properly working. From here, I'm gonna move it to my defroster, right here, and make sure the defroster is properly working. It is working. Okay, so from here, we're gonna move to the parking brakes, knobs, the properly mounted and secure, and there's no signs of any audible leaks. They're properly working. From here, we're gonna check the pedals. So I'm gonna start with my clutch. This is my clutch, it's mounted and secure, and it has no more than one inch of slack, and it's properly working, okay? 
this right here, that's my service brake, so it's mounted and secure. This shouldn't have any play, and make sure it's not binding in the bottom. It's properly working. This right here on the right side, this is my gas pedal. So make sure it's properly working, mounted and secure, and not binding. It is working. So now I'm gonna check my steering plate, make sure steering plate, it has no more than two inches of plate on our 20 inch steering wheel, it's properly working and attached. Okay, this is my city horn. And this is my air horn, it's properly working. From here, I'm gonna move to my mirrors. So I'm gonna check my West Coast mirror and my convex mirror. So make sure they're properly working. They move up, down, left, right, and it is adjusted to my view. I'm gonna check my right side. So make sure my right side is properly mounted and secure. It goes up, down, right, left, and it is adjusted to my view. Okay, so everything is properly working here. So next, I'm gonna check my emergency equipment. On this case, I have my fire extinguisher right here on the back of my seat. Okay, so it's a 10 BC, fully charged, at least one core capacity, and it's full uh, mounted and secure on the ground. Okay, right here I have my three reflected triangles. Okay, they're mounted and secure, and inside my reflected triangles I actually have some spare fuses. Okay. From here, I'm gonna move to the roof. Make sure the roof there's nothing loose that can fall down and roll under my pedals and cause an accident. Same thing with my floor. So make sure on the floor there's nothing loose that can roll under the pedals and cause an accident. So everything is good. So from here, I'm gonna start doing my air brake test. So make sure my air pressure is from 110 to 120, which we have right now. I'm going, my wheels are shocked outside, so I'm gonna unshock them in a minute. But they are shocked. My air pressure is from 110 to 120. I'm gonna turn the key to the off position so you can turn the engine off, set the key to the on position. You know when it's on, when you see all these lights coming out again, okay? Now next, I'm gonna release my parking brake and my trailer brake, push them in. That's releasing the parking brakes. I'm gonna wait for air pressure to stabilize. Okay, the air pressure stabilized already. See, when you see these two gauges stop, they're not moving anymore, and you don't hear the hissing, that's when, that's when the air pressure stabilized. Next step, I'm gonna step on my brake pedal. I'm gonna hold it down for one minute, and I should not lose any more than four PSI in that minute. So when you step on the service brakes, we're gonna have an initial drop on those gauges. Wait until that's, this gauge stops again, and then you start your timing. So I'm gonna do it right now. Look at those gauges, they're moving. Okay, they stopped right now, so I'm gonna start timing it. We need to wait for the whole minute and make sure you pay attention on your timer and your gauges. Make sure that gauge, they're not moving. If they start moving, you have to let know your examiner. Hey, we're losing air pressure, but you can continue with your air brake test. So keep an eye on your air pressure gauges. See, the gauges are holding pretty good, so we have a good system in our, on this truck. Okay, a minute has passed already, and we didn't lose four PSI. Next, I'm gonna start pumping my service brakes right here. And see, I have the low air warning light here and here, and the bastard, the beeping, okay? And that should come out around 55 PSI or more. So start pumping the service brakes, and when you see these two gauges close to 60 PSI, stop pumping. See, right here. One light. 
too light and the buzzer, okay? Next, I'm gonna keep finding my service brakes until my parking brake and my trailer brake valves pop out. They should pop out around 20 to 45 PSA. So right now, I don't care about my gauges right now. I care about these two valves to pop out. If one of them pop out, keep pumping until the other one pops out. So pay attention to these two valves. Okay, the two valves pop out, so that's good. And it did around 30 PSI, which is perfect. Okay, next I'm gonna start my vehicle again. Clutch in, start the vehicle, make sure it's in neutral. Okay, I'm gonna rev it from a, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 12, RPMs. And my air pressure should build up anywhere from 85, which is right before the 90, to 100 PSI, which is right uh, before this line right here. So I'm gonna put it about a, 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 a 1,200 RPMs and hold it there. Right about there. Hold that in place. I'm looking for these two gauges. This is normal. One of the gauges is gonna go to a, about 90 PSI. It's gonna wait for the other one. So when this one gets around 85 PSI, you can start counting, pull your timing, and it should go from 85 to 100 PSI within 45 seconds. And you can leave the RPMs at 1200, that's okay. Time starts now. So we're looking at these two gauges, they're moving together. So right before they touch this line coming up, that's about 100 PSI right there. So it did it with about 12 seconds, so this system is working properly. So next, I'm gonna go out and remove my shocks. So ask your examiner if you want to leave the track off. If you wanna turn it off, you can turn it off and I'm gonna go out to remove my shots. Okay, one of my checks is got, it got stuck, so I'm gonna start my engine and move it forward just a little bit so I can remove my shot. Okay, put it in neutral. Set the parking brakes. Okay, make sure you pull this one out and my parking brakes are set. I'm gonna leave the truck running in this case. I'm gonna remove the other shock. Okay, buckle up again. And now we're gonna continue with my brake shake or my shock test. So first I'm gonna put my transmission in a low gear. Clutch in, put it in a low gear. I'm gonna release my parking brakes. So I'm gonna push it in. Okay, the trailer brake knob is out. So the trailer brakes are set. So I'm gonna tug against the trailer brakes to make sure my trailer brakes are properly working. So with the clutch only, I'm gonna release it slowly and make sure my trailer brakes are holding. Okay, they are holding. So I'm gonna do it backwards now. So now I'm gonna set the parking brakes, pull it out and release my trailer brakes, push it in. 
same thing, low gear, try it with the clutch only slowly and make sure my parking brakes on my tractor are working. Okay, they are working. So now I'm gonna release both the parking brakes and my trailer brakes, release both. I removed the checks already so I can start going forward. At this time we can start checking the speedometer. So I'm gonna go about five miles per hour I'm gonna hold the steering wheel lightly because I'm gonna step on my clutch and the brake at the same time. My steering wheel shouldn't move to your right or the left and we're checking the service brakes. So make sure they're properly working. Hold it lightly, five miles an hour. Right about there, clutch and brake. Okay, my steering wheel didn't pull to the right or to the left or to the left so my service brakes are working properly. So I'm gonna back it up to the same spot we were. All right there. Put the transmission in neutral. Set my parking brakes. And now you can tell your examiner, this concludes my pre-training.